So guys, welcome back to RBR, and we have had an absolute blast on the channel having a look at all of the main models of the modern Porsche lineup, going all the way from the new Panamera to the brand new 992 911, and of course the Porsche SUV, the Cayenne. And we've looked throughout the history of how those cars came about and where they are today, but we have never explored the cars that perhaps saved the company at its time of difficulty, and that is the Boxster and Cayman. So today we are gonna focus on this, the Cayman 718 GTS. Today's episode of RBR is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. We love games and films as you know at RBR, so it's great to have today's episode sponsored by an RPG game that's not cutesy or cartoony, but something that's real, dark, raw, and epic like a movie. Shadow Legends takes you to a world of dark fantasy and realism and allows you to play console level graphics on your phone and on your desktop PC in an RPG filled with champions who you can upgrade and go through a full voiced over story mode campaign. I think that's my favorite part of the game. I much prefer story modes and I love the fact that this game is actually voiced over properly. In the video description, you'll find some special links and if you're a new player, you will get 100,000 silver, one energy refill, one day X EXP booster and a free champion, the Executioner. All this treasure will be waiting for you here the rewards will be available only for the next 30 days and only for new players. The game is cross-platform, as I said, and you can find me on there as Rogue Van R. Enjoy the game, guys, and please do support our sponsors. Now to the episode. Now, of course, the original entry-level Porsche was always the 911 because in the early 90s, that's pretty much all they were selling, alongside other very highly priced and low-volume cars like the Trans Axle 928. However, when a financial slump hits, one of the first things that always gets crossed off your list is buying a really expensive luxury sports car. And Porsche surely felt the effects of this in 1992 when they were on the verge of doom. Such was the financial climate in the world at that time. Either they were gonna get acquired or the company would have folded. Enter new CEO, Wendelin Wiedeking. Now, he was not going to bank on the 989 four-door luxury saloon that Porsche was planning at the time. Does that sound familiar? It's like the Panamera. It's another low volume, high cost car that would not have helped the company at that time. Instead, he was said to have said that the sub 40,000 sports car market is six times the size of the 911's market. And that is what will give Porsche stability going into the future and would double its production numbers. Now, he was right, and we'll get on to how right he was later. And the car that he had imagined was this, the Boxster concept. Now, if you're wondering where the word Boxster comes from, it comes from Boxer, as in Boxer engine, and Roadster, and the two words linked together. Now, in order for this entry-level Porsche to work, it could never be built like the 911s and the other Porsches of that time, because the car would have ended up simply costing too much. Now, Weider King understood this, and he brought in the Japanese, and we're talking specifically, ex-executives of Toyota to come into Zuffenhausen and Porsche and make the entire production facility more lean and to action Wiedeking's idea of having part sharing between the new 911 and this new entry-level car. Now this was a very unpopular move at the time for a company that was built upon heritage and it ended up cutting a lot of senior jobs and cutting the parts department down by a huge 80% compared to previously. But this allowed Wiedeking to action his plan of simultaneous planning and production of the new 911 that was to be the 996 and this Boxster car. So he made the designers, the engineers and all teams work together on both of these projects and that allowed the Boxster to be built at a price that allowed Porsche to make a good profit on it and allowed the 996 to flourish as well. And what we ended up with was the first ever Porsche built around the idea of production efficiency, and that is the Porsche Boxster. Now, this car tripled Porsche's production numbers and became a car that was selling more than any other Porsche prior to it, at least until the Cayenne turned up later on. Now, Porsche say that the design linked back to the 550 Spider of the 1950s, but honestly, from the A-pillar onwards, it was basically a 996, which was great if you were a Boxster owner, but not so great if you were a new 911 owner at the time. 
However, as soon as this car came, it was absolutely lauded by the press and customers alike for its neutral handling, its dynamic ability, the stiffness, especially compared to its rivals at the time. It was the Porsche of its class. Then of course, over time, we had incremental updates. We had a S model come in with more power, but then came the second generation. Now this came around about the time of the new 911 then, which was the 997. This time not looking like the 911, now looking more like the flagship mid-engine car, the Carrera GT, especially with the lights on the front. But that's not what was key about this generation. What was key is the 987C project, better known as the Cayman. Now the idea of a mid-engine small Porsche Coupe was a fascinating one. Now think about it. We had all the bits that we love from the box, all the dynamism and the handling neutrality, but in a body that's inherently stiffer, of course, because it is a coupe allowing for a stiffer suspension setup that allowed the Cayman S of this generation to lap the Nürburgring quicker than a Carrera 911 entry level model. Now this is why the Cayman was priced more and it was thought of by Porsche as bridging the gap between Boxster and entry level 911, a really fascinating car. Now this generation also brought on a Cayman R, which was a more stripped out version, which was kind of like we have the GTS today. And then we had the next generation. So the third generation of Boxster, second generation of Cayman. This one taking a lot more influence from 991, but definitely influence on the front end from the 918 hypercar. You can really see that in the lights. Now, of course, this car was wider, it was longer, but it was also a lighter car than the previous one and had the first GTS of the series, much like the car that we're looking at today, a bit more power, modified bumpers and more standard performance equipment in that car. And then of course, this generation also had the first GT product in the Cayman GT4, which we will get onto later. And then we have today's one, which is the 718 Cayman. Now, of course, the headline of the 718 was the car losing two cylinders and turning into a flat four turbocharged engine rather than the six cylinder naturally aspirated one. And of course there was shock and horror when this news broke. However, in today's climate, I feel it's just par for the course. Even the next C63, for example, is rumored as having four cylinders. So perhaps the Cayman and Boxster sit a little easier today than they did when they were first introduced. Now in terms of design, very much an evolution of the previous generation. In fact, the car shares the windscreen, roof, and luggage compartment lid of the previous generation, but everything else is different. We do see a bit of that 918 Spider, particularly in the front lights, I think, but really to me, it's looking a bit more like 992, and perhaps I'm thinking more of the rear, with the way the rear lights have that bar that goes through with the Porsche logo in between, as we've seen in all of their newer models. Indeed, we've got the larger 20 inch wheels all around as well. But yes, very much an evolution, as you expect, of Porsche. Now, the GTS has always sat as the stopgap between the base models and higher performance models. And in that, it always gives away a few hints through its design. And the same is true of this 718 GTS. We've got smoked headlights, smoked taillights. We've got a clearly more aggressive front bumper, as you can see here. The large 20 inch wheels finished in satin black. We've got a plethora of GTS badges outside and inside. The inside has got a special GTS interior package where you can see use of Nappa, Alcantara, and carbon everywhere. Wherever you touch this car inside is one of those premium materials, and it genuinely is built inside better than any of its other rivals. And you really get, I feel, a 991.2 feel on the inside, particularly on the passenger side and the driver's zone. Now, every base model of the Boxster and Cayman in this generation has that flat four engine. And it, normally it's something that you would never see because the Cayman and Boxster engines are so tightly packed in the back. But luckily at RBR, we like to show you a little bit more. So we are gonna show you the Cayman GTS engine that we're looking at today. This produces 365 brake horsepower, 430 newton meters of torque. It revs all the way to 7,500. However, the letdown on this engine is the sound. Now that, of course, was the GTS version sounding that way, which is not great. Now we know four cylinders can sound good, but in every iteration, including this GTS, the sound is just so lackluster and disappointing because it still had that four cylinder engine, just like in the Cayman S, only slightly bumped up by 16 brake horsepower, the same zero to 60 and basically the same performance figures as that car. 
Now, historically, when you look at Cayman and 911, and in fact, every Porsche, the GTS cars are meant to bridge the gap between the standard series cars and the more powerful turbo and GT variants. And really, this first 718 GTS doesn't do that at all. It's just too close to the Cayman S. But luckily for us Porsche fans and petrol heads, Porsche have done the unprecedented and announced that the 2020 version of the 718 Cayman and Boxster will feature once again the six cylinder four litre engine as seen in the GT4, albeit down tuned. So this one has 395 brake horsepower, which is a massive 50 brake horsepower bump up from the standard Cayman S. This wonderful new engine revs up to 7,800 RPM. The zero to 60 is very close to the GT4 cars and the engine even has cylinder deactivation to deactivate two of the cylinders and make it that much more economical. But you don't give a crap about that, do you? You wanna hear what this car sounds like and I can show you that right now. How much better does that sound compared to the four cylinder that I showed you earlier? And I just wanna say a huge thank you to Porsche for bucking the trend on behalf of all of us petrol heads and giving the customers really what they want in this 2020 GTS. The car will be offered initially manual only, but a PDK will also come later. The GT4 gets an extra 35 brake horsepower and a whole host of aerodynamic improvements. And this time the Spider is mechanically identical to the GT4 thus almost making it a drop top GT4, which is fantastic. Now, I was lucky enough to have a Goodwood Hill climb in that Spider, and I can tell you it sounds absolutely brilliant considering that it is an OPF car. Cayman priced under the box to the thrill to this coupe is even higher, especially with the GTS version now having the six cylinder and being that much more tantalizing for us to think about. Now, I can't wait to get the new four litre on the channel, but until that happens, we're going to go out in this current 718 and just see what makes the entry level Porsche so fun to drive and why for me it truly is the poster child for the love of driving. Wheel spin, wheel spin, but it's fast. Wow, this is a very, very fun car to drive. And really with the Cayman, like you guys already know, it's back to basics, the love of driving. Now I'm not gonna tell you that this feels that much quicker than the Cayman S. The difference zero to 60 is 0.1, the difference from the Nürburgring is only two seconds, but it has a bit more sonorous quality in the way that the exhaust flaps manage the sound of the car. You feel everything is a little bit more on edge, which is what you expect in GTS. Now let's take it back to basics. So let's talk about what this car handles like. Again, we've had some really exciting cars on this road of this size. I'm thinking M2 competition was extremely fun when we had a go in it, but this car, is on another level. Being a small mid-engine sports car, it really is a sports car. It's not four-seater pretending to be one. Now, I want you to think of this first drive of the 718 as commentary over the entire lineup as general because of how close this old GTS is to the normal Cayman S. Now, we've got electromechanical steering, but the steering, as with every other Porsche modern one that we've tested recently, is really, really good. You get loads and loads of feedback through the wheel and you can really shift the car it's so neutral which is exactly what you expect of Cayman it's an absolute joy to drive now of course this has got sports chrono package as standard you can see with the drive select knob on the steering wheel that also gives you dynamic engine mounts we've discussed this in our other reviews in the past it essentially reduces movements and vibrations and thus help control the weight of the car and stop it from affecting your driving dynamics and it really makes a big difference on any car that it's in. For a car like the Cayman it only compounds what is already a very solid basis for sweet handling. To my mind where you really feel it is fast corners. That's where you get the benefit of 
the dynamic engine mounts and you really appreciate it and even in the smaller car up. Now I'm just having fun here. I'm pushing myself further and further on each corner each time I go around. And that is the sign of a car that gives you confidence because the steering is great, the engine is responding exactly when I want it to, the gearbox, the PDK working exactly when I need it to. It's simply the love of driving this car. If you love to drive fast and you want the feel of a mid-engine sports car, there's really nothing that can do what this does at its price range. Yes, the one-wear testing has got a lot of options on it. Will you miss the carbon ceramic brakes? I don't think so, but it's great that in this segment, you can have them. See, I'm just pushing it further than I was before because the car is so good, it's telling me you're not driving fast enough for me. It's really just simply some of the most fun that you could ever have in a small car on exciting roads and bends for this price range. It's a really, really compelling package. To my mind, this versus the base Carrera, it's an interesting question that you guys have asked me on Instagram. For me, it will always be the Carrera because of the extra two little seats in the back. And I just love the 911. But I could easily see why this would tempt you given how much money you would save and just how similar thrills you get out of this car compared to its big brother. It is a fabulous, fabulous little mid-engine car. Like most cars, owners might end up getting aftermarket exhaust to make it sound a bit better. The way that the engine responds and how quickly you get the torque and how fast the car feels really does the job for me. I think it's a good engine. It just doesn't sound that good. Yeah, the love of driving. That, to me, encapsulates what this Cayman is about. It just really makes you smile when you're driving fast. I can't wait to get that new four litre six cylinder on the channel. It's surely gonna fix the main problems that I have with this car, which is power and sound. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Look at the history of the Boxster and the Cayman. So if you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.